Boxing Club! <laughs> well, weather it's hot, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we've got. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, weather it's cold, weather it's hot. The Comedia Report. Frankie's got the weather, weather or not. <laughs> because rehearsals for cowards. We don't even talk before the show. Just Frankie shows up and I say, let's go. Hit record on the Comedian Report. I'm Joey Olney and welcome to our show, the Comedian Report. It's a report about weather, but with a kind of a lighthearted sort of look at things, you know. So that's what we're trying to do here is uh, be entertaining, funny, witty. Well, our natural selves, which is sort of bizarre. I Did I say who I am yet? I'm Joey Olney. I'm your host of your show. You're hearing us on C for 88.7 FM every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And you're hearing us on CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg, Mondays at noon local time. The Comedian Report, we are here to talk about comedy and meteorology. I'm here with the comedian Frankie McDonald, the world-famous weatherman over in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Frankie, the weatherman. Frankie, the weatherman. And we got Brandon Houck, as always, down in Brooks, Alberta. He's best known for 105.7 FM, the radio, the country radio station in Brooks, Alberta, where Brandon is a regular weatherman and voice and radio personality and all that stuff. But first, always first, Frankie McDonald. Frankie McDonald, how you doing so far? I'm doing great so far. There's a huge storm. And all across eastern United States, entire eastern North America this weekend, going from Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI, Maine, New Hampshire, Fermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, including Houston, Texas, Tampaco, Mexico, and major storms going all the way down to Cancun, going all the way down to Honduras, El Salvador and Costa Rica and Guatemala. It's going to bring high winds in northeastern Mexico as well. It's this huge storm because of polar vortex causing a big storm in Ontario, Michigan, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and all those uh, West Virginia and Arkansas and Missouri and all these places. This is a gigantic storm. It's going to bring high winds. It's going to bring tornado outbreak all across the entire east coast of the United States. In southeast the United States, it's going to bring tornado outbreak with large hail damage winds. In surrounding areas, it's going to bring thunder, lightning, rain, timber. It's going to be so busy for that. Right, yeah. Well, Reed will be chasing tornadoes like crazy, it sounds like. Frankie, is this uh, a sign of spring kind of coming? Although it seems like it's not spring because coming it's winter. Because of tornadoes in southeast the United States, Reed will be up to high gear. Chris Chittick will be kicking up in the high gear next month because he'll be chasing tornadoes in Saskatchewan. Chris Chittick will be up the maximum gear then. Yeah, especially in May and June, as Brandon will tell you, uh, Saskatchewan gets busy quickly as we get closer to that summer time. Um, Frankie, right. when is spring coming for Eastern Canada? March 20th, first official day of spring. And did you hear about that? First official day of fall in Australia and New Zealand. Weather's gradually getting cooler in South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand, and the southern Argentina and Chile because they'll be entering their fall the year on March 20th. When it's our longest day of the year on June 21st, Chile, Argentina, Australia, and New Zealand, and South Africa has their shortest day of the year on June 21st. Because when it's our summer, it's their winter. So, yeah, my question is, when when do you think the pattern will change into a spring pattern for Eastern Canada? Don't know yet. It's going to be gradually because the, the sun will be in a different angle, will be heating up the Arctic. Then it'll be then the Arctic. It will be warming up there. Siberia will be warming up. Siberian high is going to gradually weaken the Yakutsk Russia. I have a feeling that British Columbia is about to see its spring start breaking really quickly here. Uh, we had some cold weather this week, but I think we've probably seen the last of the coldest weather. So that means uh, the melt will hit. Uh, the melt will start hitting. Uh, certainly, lower elevations and places down south will start seeing more of that spring weather. I'm sure. And, they're probably excited for it. I'm trying to just keep uh, on top of that snow as long as I can here, Frankie. Just trying to keep snowshoeing 
as long as I can, that snowshoeing and the, the good snowmobiling we have, we're able to just go everywhere we want right now for work. It's really wonderful. Frankie, what's going on in Europe for uh, weather right now? And especially, what's the weather in Ukraine? Over in Europe, I'm supposed to get a lot of cold weather and warm in the UK right now. There's a storm heading for UK as of right now. Then it's going to bring really, really bad weather in Ukraine and all those places right now in Syria. And then and it's going to bring cold weather in Ukraine and Russia. It's going to bring cold weather going all the way down to Egypt, and Libya, and all these places, Turkey and Syria and Iraq and all those, and Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, and all these places could get really cold weather. There's just some kind of storm headed for Britain, and there's a huge storm headed for Greenland after hitting North America on Saturday and Sunday. And it's going to head towards Greenland, and Iceland's going to get a big blizzard up in Iceland. Right. So as that comes uh, off of and, you are, uh, and over in as it comes off the east coast, over in it's Japan, and weather's getting weather's still pretty cold. In Japan is gradually warming up in southern Japan. Cold air, warm air fighting each other. South Korea is gradually getting warmer, and China, northern China, and Mongolia is still really cold. I guess he's just showing up for the show, Frankie. Monica, your old friend Monica, Hi, Monica. Bolu. Hey, Monica, boy, you haven't seen you in forever. She's still connecting to audio. Hi. <laughs> Here, take over, baby. Say hi. Hey, everybody. This is hi, David Young. Hi. Hello. Hi, David. I'm doing great so far. Uh, hi, Frankie. Frankie. You know, you're from North Sydney, Nova Scotia, Canada. Frankie. I'm doing How great so you? far, David. That means Frankie. That Frankie, we miss you. We miss you, too. That means Frank pro Frankie. professional... I you live close. You used to live to close to North Sydney Mall one time. We, oui. you see, I can speak French now, Frankie, because I'm in Bonaventure. Bonaventure. That means the weather in, in the, over in Japan, in the Sydney, Australia, weather there is in South Africa. They're getting really cold, hot weather, cold air, fighting warm air, cold air, fighting each other again. Then they've got a cyclone hitting for Mozambique, Africa, is right now. It's going to bring high winds, heavy rain in Mozambique to bring a lot of thunderstorms in South America, like Amazon rainforest, Brazil, and Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Venezuela, and all these places in Colombia to bring a lot of thunderstorms. Indonesia is in the last month of rainy season right now. As in us, New Zealand's getting a lot of weather there and right now, and still pretty hot in North Island, New Zealand. It's gradually getting cooler. In Australia, southeastern Australia, will be entering the fall as well. In this time of year with the swing weather, Frankie, who is getting the hottest weather right now on planet Earth? Somewhere in Africa, south of Egypt, somewhere in Central Africa. It's around 40 degrees in some places. Who's getting the heaviest monsoons right now? Indonesia, they're in the last month of monsoon right now. And, and they'll, be entering the, they'll be entering the dry season in Indonesia. In Bangkok, Thailand, will be getting the monsoon season. India will be getting extremely hot weather next month in May. In June, once again in July, India will be in the monsoon season. Frankie, we and miss you. Is that Fred the Bear you that's got Fred there? Fred the Bear, that's Noel the Bear. Fred the Bear. Got Fred all the bear Frank. Old bear. Got all those old How bears. How many pops there. did you drink today, Frankie? One. One? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> did. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wait I a second. Oh, did you take your vitamin D? Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I did. I miss you, Frankie. I miss you so much. First day. It's a first day with the new brain, uh, Frankie. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, we're gonna dig a. Uh, I'm gonna dig a snow tunnel tomorrow because we got that much snow here. And we're gonna do some videos with Fred the Bear and Noel the Bear and and Doctor Octopus and King Octopus too. <laughs> yes. In the tunnels. And we have some freaking snow coming as of tomorrow afternoon. So it's going to bring I a snowstorm in your area, Monica. David, you have to be, be prepared for a big snowstorm. Yes. Actually, if the snowstorm can, can collapse part of the roofs, I'll be like safe because it's going to save me money on labor work uh, when the contractors come in May or June to replace the roof and the recovering of, of like the, well, you explain it. I'm behind the scenes, guys. Explain what's getting done in May or June. What happened uh, to the roof? April showers, May flowers. For me. New roof, new siding, new heat pump. Uh, what else? Already have the ultra, uh, ultra light. <laughs> Water softener. Oh yes, the ultra light. Uh, I haven't got a snowman yet, though, Frank. We're gonna gotta have a snowman. Well, right now, you can work. you can walk onto the roof of my house right now. So if uh, everybody who thinks <laughs> that 
Everyone who thinks they have a lot That's of snow. I'm, debating. I'm like, I'm thinking we need to remove the snow before the snow comes tomorrow afternoon. But at the same time for my house, it, it's not a big deal because it'll save me on labor work because the contractors are coming in May and June. Well, so the maybe it'll get them there sooner. How many, how many centimeters? Yeah, are you shovel and snow. Historic, in this historic snowfall coming well, this big. I, I wish it was safe. 20 centimeters, 40 well, centimeters. You're talking 50. An Olympic. You're talking 70 centimeters. How yeah, much snow you expected? So. It doesn't matter how much falls here. It's, it depends on the weight because we have like drifting snow. We have the wind and stuff. And so it's like blizzard like. So no matter what amount of snow falls, you can get 50 centimeters just in blowing snow after plowing your driveway four enough. times. Yeah, it's the first time I, I, I'm starting to perfect a new thing. It's uh, you just put a kite ski on and, and carry a <laughs> shovel. And you can shovel the driveway back. That carry might a work. Shovel on a ski. Yeah. They gotta get it made. <laughs> Here, you it's gotta, have, it's gotta have a little bit more control over your um, over the uh, ski. I spent today. Well, yesterday was an even better example. Yesterday, we left the work truck. We're 200 kilometers into the wilderness. Uh, we're here at camp. So we left camp at 30 kilometers, drove 30 kilometers into the bush, then we took the snowmobiles off. We drove yesterday 44 kilometers round trip, and that included seven kilometers of snowshoeing to do our timber counts and boundary amendments. So uh, that was quite a wilderness afternoon I had yesterday. Okay. So I'm enjoying the snow still because that's allowing us to go everywhere. As soon as that ice starts thawing, then all these swamp systems that we're snowmobiling on become moot. And uh, Brandon Helk, I'm sure in a minute, will be able to tell us all about when that might be happening in BC. Frankie, can you please explain to the listeners what your YouTube channel is, what kind of things you did this week, what videos did you make, who did you talk to? Let them know, Frankie McDonald. I was telling Guess what? I did a video called a massive storm to hit the entire Eastern North America on Friday, March 11, 2022. This is Frankie McDonald, my own TV station live from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Massive storm is headed towards Eastern North America on Friday, March 11, 2022. It's going to bring very strong winds and rain and cold scenarios like. Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Vermont, with a lot of snow, including Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, including Houston, Corpus Christi, and Northeastern Mexico, going all the way down to Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. It's going to bring wind driven rain, very strong winds that can cause power outages, including coastal areas in the eastern United States. It's going to bring big, huge waves crash on beaches, shores in the eastern United States. Winds are going to be very strong. It's going to bring Powerful winds, including Eastern United States, including Saturday, March 12, 2022. It's going to bring powerful winds with a lot of snow in Ontario, Eastern United States. It's going to hit Ontario, Quebec, Montreal, and the surrounding areas. It's going to bring gigantic storm, even down. He goes to Texas on Friday. The Corpus Christi, Dallas, Texas, and Tampaco, Mexico, and Northeastern Mexico. Glenn went all the way down to Guatemala and the surrounding areas. Make sure you have your extra batteries, battery operating lanterns, smartphones charged, laptops charged, and tablets charged, and mobile internet ready. Make sure you have your tablets and everything charged. Make sure you have your emergency kits, medical kits, flashlights, candles, crank up radio, extra battery generators, battery operating lanterns, and Bottle water ready as well. It's going to bring powerful winds with a lot of wind, drive of rain all across the entire Eastern North America. It's going to start on Friday, March 11, 2022. It's going to continue on to Saturday, March 12, 2022. All across Eastern North America. Have your bottle water ready as well. Make sure to stay away from the beaches and don't go near shores for the entire Eastern 
North America is going to bring a lot of snow in Kentucky, Tennessee. It's going to and Ohio and with very strong winds in Michigan and parts of Wisconsin and the surrounding areas as well. Storm is going to be mighty powerful with strong winds. Be prepared. If you have anybody living in Eastern United States and Canada and Mexico, be prepared for powerful storm on Saturday, March 12th and Friday, March 11th, 2022. Take care, stay safe. Don't get caught in a powerful storm. Stay warm, be safe. And that's the massive storm we're talking about. Also just joined us in the radio show is uh, Gabriel Barrado. Just showed up down there in Southern Ontario. Good evening, Gabriel. Yeah. Good to see you. We got we got a show Thank here. You. So the whole panel's here. We got uh, Monica Boyu and David. We got Brandon Houck over in Brooks, Alberta. We got Gabriel Barardo in Southern Ontario. We got Frankie Monica McDonald, of course, in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Frankie, give us some podcasts for you on this week. Let people know where can they find I was more. on the Reckless Aries Radio, and that was on the Ham Radio, and that was on, and that was on another podcast. And then Shuli show back on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sad yeah. I didn't do, join you for that one. <laughs> and Roger, the wild child show on Sunday. When you'd messaged me to join the show, I literally just sat down with uh, my tray of food, camp food, and I was just like, there's no way I can go on a podcast right now. Good to talk to you, Frankie. Stick yeah, around. Uh, the show is about Frankie. Anyone got questions for Frankie McDonald? That's always important. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, actually. Uh, Frankie, tell them when you... Go to sleep, Frankie. When do you go to sleep? Four o'clock in the morning, my area. Three yeah, o'clock in your in area. Morning. Two o'clock in Winnipeg, in <laughs> area. Wow. What time do you get up, Frankie? So well, Twelve o'clock. I'm getting Roger on. Decent amount. You have like what is that? Like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's like about nine hours. So I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good sleep, Frankie. It's still pretty good sleep. So it sounds like Frankie's going to be uh, trying to get Roger the Wild Child to join us during the show. Brandon Houck, we might as well take uh, our leave quickly and go over to you and talk to you about, uh, A, so I was already asking you, when is that pattern change really going to hit British Columbia? When are we going to have that uh, that spring pattern set in? I think it's right on the doorstep. I think we've seen the last of the real cold weather here. What's that cold weather looking like in Alberta right now and the prairies and what should uh, winnipeg listeners be looking forward to i forgot to mention at the top of the show that we are recording this on march the 10th so you'll be hearing us on c for 88.7 on march the 12th and march the 14th in winnipeg so uh you'll be some behind on these weather stories but this is why we it's we're trying to basically have a a summary of weather stories and things like that during the week so Maybe we're not your best place to look for uh, weather forecasting for your area, but nonetheless, uh, here's a good look at what's been going on through Western Canada, and the man is Brandon Houck. All right, Brandon Houck out here to run for all those lost by Duke. So, yeah, so we had the uh, fairly sharp cold front to go through on Monday, and we had winds gusts anywhere from 80 to 90 kilometers an hour, so that caused a lot of issues, especially on the road. Many uh, semis got jackknifed, especially through central regions of the province there on Monday. So that was that first storm that moved. But there stayed well below average throughout most of this week, actually. Uh, we've So far this month, we've only had one day above the melting point. So it's been pretty cold. And tonight, we're going to see our temperature drop into the minus 20s. And we've got extreme cold. Uh, we had another round of blowing snow today in Saskatchewan, causing near zero visibility. So uh, yeah, another day of blowing snow in Saskatchewan. Manitoba blowing snow advisories have been out once again. And now we've got extreme cold warnings for tonight with wind chills dipping near minus 40 once again in Saskatchewan and parts of Manitoba. So they're they still hanging it. on to the winter. The winter that does end. But it's going to start changing as we go into next week here. Uh, we do have a system coming in on Saturday. So tomorrow still below average, but then we see our temperatures recover here in Alberta Saturday. And that will allow for temperatures to get up above the melting point. It will also get quite windy, especially for the southwestern corner of the province. And we also get another blast of snow moving across the prairies here, Saturday into Sunday. And then Sunday, we might even have a little snow in southern Alberta again. And then next week, we get the atmospheric river really start ramping up here on the BC coast here, actually starting this weekend here. So Vancouver actually might get a little snow tomorrow night uh, in parts of the island there before it all goes to downright rain as we go into uh, the beginning of next week here. 
so we could be up to at least uh, 80 to 100 millimeters of rain for the south coast for the beginning of next week. So it's going to get quite wet in the BC interior, quite a bit of snow uh, at times as we go into next week. But uh, higher elevations will get quite a bit of snow. Lower elevations will be primarily a rain event. Now, across the prairies here, we will likely see a l- another couple little bands of snow passing on by. We might even get some thunder showers and Central Alberta on Tuesday. Sure, why not? Let's throw that in, too. So that'll be Tuesday's uh, <laughs> weather scenario with the passing by. It will be quite windy at times. Mild conditions will be pushing temperatures at the teens. So that's going to be a nice recovery from where we've been so far this month. And even Manitoba might actually see temperatures recover next week to near the freezing mark for the first time this year. And it might be mild enough to get a little rain mixing in with some of the snow they've been dealing with there. So... It's not going to be, they're not going to go up to the teens like Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan, though, so they're going to have to wait a little longer for that, but uh, we'll see a nice recovery to temperatures across the prairies well into next week here. And we did have some of that extreme cold of yours spill into northern BC over the last few days, so when I was waking up here in the northern Chilcotin, uh, we drive out to uh, where we're going to disembark for our timber cruising adventure, and it said minus 26 in our truck. However, throughout the day, the sun starts uh, doing what it does, and uh, at this time of year, it's now high enough that the the UV radiation is powerful, and uh, by mid-afternoon, we're sweating out there in the bush, so uh, just, you know, wild temperature swings during those uh, cold, clear, sunny nights, or sunny days that uh, don't, I'll, I'll restate that, those cold, clear nights and big sunny days that you get in the weather uh, winter here. So I feel like BC is starting to see this pattern change in towards uh, seasonal weather, Brandon, in that uh, I think we've been kind of hugging the, the bottom end of seasonal for a little while here. Saturday, uh, Pr- uh, Prince George, you're going to see some sunny weather for change, 4 degrees and uh, minus 5 at night. And Sunday, it's going to start clouding up a little bit, maybe some rain or snow at nighttime. So uh, high of three during the day, uh, low of one. I don't really believe that. If you get any sunshine at all, it's going to heat up quick. However, you will see that uh, coming to Monday, looking at nine degrees during the day, sunny, minus two at night. Uh, Tuesday, nine degrees uh, during the day, a little cloudy, minus four at night. Wednesday, a mix of sun and cloud, eight degrees. So we're starting to see, and really at this time of year, uh, six, seven, eight degrees would probably be a seasonal high in the afternoon, I would think. So uh, to me, I'm, we're seeing uh, a switch out of that. Am, am, I, am I somewhat correct on that, Brandon? I know we got that atmospheric river coming. Well, that always feeds warmer weather into British Columbia. So in my mind, as long as that Arctic air is being blasted back over the mountains, uh, we're doing good here. Yeah, so yeah, you'll definitely see uh, temperatures recover throughout most of next week. And uh yeah, I don't think anybody in Western Canada will have to worry about uh, Arctic air at all next week after this uh, plume is done. Will it be done for the season? Uh, we'll have to see on that part uh, because uh, winter can come sneaking on back in here. Sometimes even in April, I've had temperatures drop to minus 20s and minus 30s. I've seen that before. So it can happen when we've even had our, uh, sometimes we've had our biggest snowstorms of the season in the spring and southern alberta so certainly yeah. april uh 17th 2008 when i was in alberta for my birthday uh it was snowing hard and of course uh, where i live in wells up high in the mountains it can snow and has snowed every month of the year that i've lived there uh, over the last uh 15 years or whatever right so there's not a month in the year we don't see snow in wells at some point uh, maybe not every year but uh july is definitely not uh you know, it's definitely summertime in July, but uh, that's, and Alberta, much the same. You're in that uh, high plateau. We haven't uh, talked to Gabriel Barardo much but I, uh, yet, so we do need to go to him. But I, I got to ask about the Brooks Bandits and what's been going on, because that's really been uh, a great story. You've been kind of taking us through all winter long. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, the, the season is done, the regular season. So the Brooks Bandits had a, uh, well, 52 winning record season, and uh, many players had record-breaking years for the season. Uh, so absolutely incredible run there. And now we got the first bye of the playoffs. So we are not playing this week or we're not playing until next week, actually. 
So while the other teams face off and we figure out who we're going to play for the second round of the playoffs, so that starts March 18th. So we're looking forward to that for a big playoff run and uh, hopefully uh, another run for the uh, NJAC Cup at the end of May there. So did uh, TJ Hughes get his 60 goals? Oh, yeah. He got over 60 goals. Amazing. And like 60. 49 was the previous record for the Alberta Junior Hockey League, right? Yeah. So, yeah. We, and, uh, you know, and some are saying Kale McCarr is one of the best players in the NHL right now. So, I mean, there's there's your history of the Brooks Bandits producing very, very good hockey players. And uh, that's exciting to see. So, we'll be asking you in the coming weeks as you get back to playoff time. And, of course, uh, you can listen to the Brooks Bandits radio broadcasts, which are produced by Brandon Houck for uh, 105.7 FM, the country radio station there in Brooks, Alberta. Please stick around. But does anyone have any questions for Brandon Houck about Western Canada weather or just uh, his green shirt or uh, um, about that tornado outbreak down hey, south? Daddy. I wouldn't mind getting your... Uh... Oh, yes. So, yeah, we had a significant... I was actually covering that, uh, especially in Iowa. We had another uh, couple of tornadoes in Arkansas, but they weren't that big, so it wasn't. it didn't cause too much of an impact there. And then, Actually, we even had tornadoes yesterday in Alabama and Florida near Mobile and near uh, uh, yeah, Panama City there. So that was the situation yesterday. And it looks like tomorrow on the uh, yeah, the 11th, looks like we have a enhanced risk around Tallahassee, Florida. So we're going to watch that area for tornadoes as well. Now, uh, back to Iowa here. They had a pretty bad day. Significant tornadoes uh, touched down there on Saturday which was, I forget the date, but uh, that was last Saturday there. And uh, we had uh, at least one large tornado touchdown just to the uh, southwest of Des Moines, the uh, ma major city center here. Probably, I think, yeah, the biggest city in all of the uh, whole state of Iowa there. I think it's the and, only city uh, in Iowa. There's, I think there's Cedar Rapids is another one. That's the other oh, yeah, one it's I called know, Rapid but, City. That's right. I guess it, I guess so it must tornado, be speed. But the tornado touched down. So this was, uh, I think this tornado was on the ground for at least 90 minutes. And there was a couple other brief touchdowns during the day. And then this one became a full-on wedge tornado that developed right at Corning, uh, Iowa. And it traveled all the way into the municipality of Winterset, where they had significant damage. I think, sadly, nine people lost their lives. Uh, in winter set there. So that was that. And then the uh, tornado went all the way into Norwalk and eventually just grazed by the uh, supercell, the tornadic supercell just grazed right by Des Moines, just on the south side. And then it touched down another tornado, a large one near Newton. And it, uh, then it eventually dissipated before reaching the river near Marshalltown there. So yeah, pretty significant tornado there. Uh, sadly, a few people lost their lives. And that uh, was just the uh, start of the um, tornado season. And a couple days later, they had at least a couple inches of snow on top of all that tornado damage. So quite well, a uh, that, scene there. And I, It's that cold coming in behind it that uh, was fueling that tornado basically too, right? So that hey, snow. Hey, uh, Joey, symptomatic. guess what? All one half of the world is interested in the species and climate. Other half of the world is more interested in the World War Three. I found it all. All fast food places cut off from Russia. Every North American Western culture is now cut off from Russia. They cut off Samsung from Russia. They cut off all major electronics from North America from, from Russia too. They're not delivering any microchips over there. They're not delivering any stuff. That means that U.S. banned oil import from Russia. The United States can't export oil to Russia at all because Vladimir Putin is different now. He's isolating himself. And over in Russia, they banned Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and they banned McDonald's, and they banned all fast food places from North America there. So it's like the Iron Curtain yeah, well, is I mean, going uh, back up, yeah. basically. It reminds me of my childhood in the 80s, and uh, Russia was this big mystery because we had nothing there. And then when they finally put a McDonald's into Russia, it was like a sign of progress in some sick, twisted, bizarre way. But that's what it was, right? Um Let's talk about Russia, but we haven't talked to Gabriel Barardo yet, and he's just had uh, – so, I mean, yep. Monica and David over in uh, in Bonneville, Bonaventure, Quebec, they got a uh, big, bad storm system coming to them this weekend. Some of that's come through Ontario. What's the relation to it? How – what happened? Talk well, to us about I your mean, weather, GB. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not going to really impact us as much 
maybe about five centimeters or so. And then there will be squalls because the low will deepen very fast. I think, I think when it's in like, think when it's like north, I'm I, uh, think when it's in, uh, Newfoundland or so it's going to dip into like the 950s millibar low with a huge windstorm there, rain there, snow there. And it will, and it is a bomb cyclone that actually will be moving up the coastal areas. But though, but though, it will not be impacting us uh, here in the province. As I also said, right, we have some squalls moving in with that. I don't think those squalls are going to hit me because of the way that the winds are going. Uh, but though, are we? Could see some, uh, as I have said, a uh, couple centimeters of snowfall and then some cold weather on the backside of that. But though, but though, heading into next week, heading into later next week, we'll be seeing, uh, seeing those temperatures get even warmer. I mean, like eight to nine Celsius. And then, well, yes, next weekend, 15 Celsius. And then, uh, and then, of course, we will be sticking around there for, well, the next weekend, heading into the weekend after uh, uh, next week. And it will be uh, hopefully quite nice weather with that, right? I don't want to see some... Oh, okay, wait, hold up, actually. I actually do want to see some storm systems move in because I love it, right? I mean, <laughs> I just want some of that rain. I want some windstorms, too. We actually had a windstorm, I think, last week, and I think it was no, 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 great, hold up. It was actually like, I think it was on last weekend. I think it was uh, Sunday. Yes, mm -hmm. we had a windstorm move in. Uh, there wasn't damage. Um, okay, well, uh, you know what? There's actually a little bit. I saw some shingles, off some roofs, but I mean, it wasn't horrible. But it was actually pretty good because we had the upper level winds mixed down with the surface winds, and it just made a few hours of uh really 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 strong winds but i mean uh oh yeah uh, okay look that was also a pretty warm day too i mean 15 celsius on sunday i think we had and some i think areas had about 17 or 16 to 18 maybe i think I after weather. being around canada so much of my life and then growing up in central ontario like more than anywhere else in Canada, Central Ontario can be a real crapshoot for what March can be like. Because I can recall marches that were still winter, full on. And I can recall marches where it was spring yeah. break, and March break, and uh, snow was melted pretty much all off, and it was sunny and warm. And I mean, that's that's going back, back to my childhood. I mean, this, so I mean, just Ontario's got that swing capability. You know, you just don't really know what... You could be well, uh, as of course Brandon said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, as of course Brandon said, right? Uh, uh, you know what I mean, like he could get his worst snowstorms in the month of, or in the season of spring, right? I mean, that could still happen here. I don't really think that it will, but I mean, I, I mean, I mean, could still see twenty to thirty centimeters of snowfall here in the uh, uh, maybe in late March or even in April. Maybe even in May, although I highly doubt. I highly doubt it. The whatever. Last April, and then also yeah. going back the beard. Just if like you me. recall, we had uh, yep. seventy-five <laughs> centimeters fall in wells. That's, we had we had seventy-five centimeters in April last year. In March and April last year, we were the biggest snowpack of any incorporated town in Canada. So uh, we're probably close to that. Although I see that uh, well, Powder King is not incorporated, but Powder King. Up in the Pine Pass, north of us, has over 300 centimeters of base snow right now. So that's pretty good skiing conditions there. Well, I mean, yeah. Look, imagine, imagine 75 centimeters falling in the city of uh, Toronto. I mean, that I would be a whole lot worse. I think. In yeah. 1999, I was there, <laughs> not in Toronto, but Hamilton. That would be like very, very, very impactful. I mean, I mean, like you look at how much people live in the city, right? And have like work. Uh, nobody would be going to work the next day if you had 75, even of course 50. I mean, like 
Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Called the army in, and right? all of Canada was laughing. Oh, the it, yeah. Know? But I mean, the reality was, because uh, we had we had about 120 centimeters in Hamilton, I think, and there was nowhere to put. Yeah, snow. yeah. Well, man, we live in a city. We, we live, we live, we live in a city. So Canada. Like there's could already have nowhere to us, park. But man, we have a city. Like the rest of Canada, barely has any like big, big, big cities like our city here. Okay. Toronto's like, well, like the biggest in the uh, uh, country, right? Like the biggest city in and the, got the uh, best hockey team. country. So, I mean, like it's big. It I wasn't didn't catch any of it because uh, one, of, one of our guys decided to, to be an hour late getting back to the truck tonight. So, we were about to start dispatching the <laughs> rescue well, party. And I didn't, so that's why I didn't get back to here to camp till like six o'clock. And then I scarfed down some supper as fast as I could and tried to. I put some moisturizing lotion on my face. Brandon said I should do that, so I did. Can you explain to radio listeners skin moisturizer in Alberta? Oh, yes. Alberta, the place where your hands will crack and start to bleed, and now you got a moisturizer <laughs> on your skin, and you just dab it on, dab it on, and, and then all of a sudden your skin is like soft as a baby's face, just like this stuff here, this uh, ch lip chap here. Ah, that's good stuff. Uh, keep your lips from going dry and going. So I'm wondering, like, if if we require skin moisturizer and lip chap to live in Alberta, like, are humans supposed to live in Alberta? Of course, we got the schnooks to keep us nice and dry and cozy during the winter. Like, time. We're not well adapted for that. My face right now, because the the Ch North Chilcotin is dry, and I got too much sun because the sun just beaming off the snow right into my face a little, all little snow all little sun rays like just like needles and now i'm so dry and i hate it that's all well i mean look <laughs> none of us what is the what is the population there none of us i don't know if humans are supposed to live there or not but hey i mean there's still some living there and it's cold up there and all they have is snow for miles and if you ever get hurt there somehow then and if you get frostbite i don't think you could just call the ambulance or anything like that to just come up there i mean well, yeah, cold, look, people cold is one thing you can put clothes on but what did humans do before moisturizing lotion was invented like we had buffalo robes to wear you know we we could put on oh, socks okay. we had we had socks but we didn't the human body does just not naturally produce skin moisturizer. Well, uh, maybe they found it. Out. No, you know what? Maybe they invented something other, other, uh, other like uh, something that makes your skin like soft. Maybe like they somehow like found like a natural thing that they could use maybe on their skin. Who knows? So I mean, right? that's what baseline. And uh, I'm gonna try it. Oh yeah, yeah. Try some vase line. Oh yeah. Oh man. See, I used to think skin moisturizer was for girls when I lived in Ontario. People would be like, oh, "I need skin moisturizer." I never thought it was My hands old. crack, and I'd be girls like, "Your hands? More. What? You need skin moisturizer? What kind of man needs skin moisturizer?" That's what I told them. And uh, now well, I know. Look. I'm the kind of man who needs skin moisturizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. I mean, I'll kill it. Men do use it, but women use it more for some reason. I don't well, know why. Because they but care if you about themselves. Ask most women. Or, That's why. Yeah. 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 Right. Where like, I, have all I gave the, myself a haircut. Hair. Remember how bad my hair was? I gave myself a haircut, and now there's just a whole bunch of hair sticking out of my neck because I can't cut my own neck hair, and uh, it's that bad. I'm a wreck, you know. But women. So I found something here. They put on skin moisturizer. So I found something here. Uh, they uh, moisturized their skin in the past here. So the ancient Greeks used olive oil and beeswax. Beaver, eat flour. Yeah, see? Natural. Milk to their faces to help keep their skin moisturized. So they put some bread and then they dab some bread and some milk and then they rub their face with that. Oh, good Could stuff. that actually still work now or no? Could that like oh. still actually work to this day, you think? And then they use some fragrances from flowers as lotions too. See, beeswax is not natural. Google. 
you try to get that wax and uh, those buggers will uh, bite you. That's what they do. Mm hmm. I don't know, but I mean, the other yeah, like, natural about like, that. like stuff other than that. The other stuff other than that, like oil, like uh, whatever it was in the bread and the milk, kind of. Olive oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it's technically kind of natural. I don't know. I mean, is it not? Okay, no, I don't know if it's natural or not. Never mind. It is, it is, it works. It's, as long as it works, it works, okay? It doesn't matter if it's natural or not. It works, it works. You find out, it works. <laughs> Speaking of bees, this reminds me of... This reminds me to tell you all to always wear pants when you're riding on a four wheeler. Never wear shorts on a four wheeler. Can, can Dave sing us a rap song, please? I would like that. I can't right now, guys. I don't have like a beat ready or anything like that. But you didn't let me tell you why you don't wear <laughs> shorts. On a on show. But... You didn't let me tell you why you don't wear shorts on a four wheeler. Anybody know why you don't wear shorts on a four wheeler? Why is that? No one knows. So this happened to me when I was 15. I was quadding up the road there, up by mom's place, and I was just booking down the road, legs wide open, letting all that air just go right up my shorts into my shorts area. And then suddenly out of the blue, I was like, ow, what the, and I start, and something was biting me. So I started punching it, and it was in my pants, you know, and I was like going like 60 on a quad, and uh, it was a. It turned out to be a bumblebee, and it was right in that space. Aww. You know that little valley between like your your things and your leg. You know, there's that sort of like concave area, and that bumblebee got in there, and it was and because bumblebees can sting more than once, I'll have you know. So, um, long story short, I managed to get the quads stopped. I probably punched myself in my own bag about seven times. I got stung multiple times. Then I had to call my baseball coach and explain why I wasn't going to make the game that night. It's like, no, seriously, I've not been drinking. Uh, a bumblebee went up my shorts while I was riding the quad and uh, started stinging me in the nuts, and I started punching myself repeatedly, and I'm having trouble walking now. I think you need to let the other guy play second base tonight. True story. Wow. That's why you wear shorts never on a quad. Well, look. You wouldn't be catching yeah. that game. I have, I have never been stung by anything. I think, I don't think I've been uh, bitten by anything except, of course, mosquitoes. I mean, yeah, we yeah. all have been bitten by those. But well, bees, I'm scared of. Man, I always have dreams of bees and that sound in your ear. I don't know why. Like sometimes I have those dreams and I'm like, oh my god, man. And I just start like running and I'm just like, I just, I just can't stand bees and like the way they look and like the way like they do things and like the way they sting people. And bees are nice. I would be so scared of them. Like, bees are your friends, but it's not your are, friends though. They're about, are these, uh, nice. oh, these meat out. eating, there's these meat nice. eating little buggers that are somewhat related to bees and uh, they got real long stingers and that, you know, they're really mean. They're paper wasps and things like that, yellow jackets. And uh, every forest firefighter, yeah, those uh, ill. we love being out in the cut block and then happening to stumble on a hornet's nest in the ground. And uh, that's when you'll see uh, some firefighter running across. Um, one of the great things, though, is if you have a water pump on, you just blast the bug and go. You know, it's like, that'll keep the hornets off them. And it's really fun no, blocking like, your buddy with water, yeah, too. Yeah, but like, you're like it. Awesome. If I was a uh, firefighter like you, I wouldn't do that because I would be scared that a thousand of them would just come out and start following you. And even if you have, like, the water on, I think that they would still find the way. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know how much water comes out of that thing. I know it's a lot, but, like, you need it, like, everywhere, all over your body. Also gonna find somewhere to sting it. I don't know, man. Hornets, uh, yellow jackets, bees, man. They're all scary, in my opinion. Those Back in the nineties, the there was this. There was this TV show in the nineties on Fox called "When Animals Attack," right? And then so this one segment starts off. It's like 
Now watch what happens to Reverend Jim Johnson as he mows his lawn through a cloud of Africanized killer bees. And then uh, they had to reenact this one, but the reenactment was even funnier because it's like, but uh, so then the guy's like mowing his lawn and uh, there's a cloud of bees, but he just keeps mowing into the cloud. Of, and then he's like swings up one and two. And he's like, oh, oh, then you see the distress. And he's like, ah. And the next thing you know, he's like being attacked by Africanized killer bees. What they do is they get on you by the hundreds, right? Like they huge swarms of them. So he runs and he's trying to get away from the bees, but they overtake him and start stinging him relentlessly. And he falls on the ground on the sidewalk and he's just getting covered in bees and they're just stinging him and trying to kill him basically. So then his son looks out the window and he's like, dad, oh my God. He doesn't know what's happening to his dad. He just sees his dad's laying on the ground. He's like, Dad! So he runs out. But then the bees attack him, too, of course, right? So then his son's like, Arr! And then he's like on the ground next to his dad. They're both getting covered by bees and stung by bees. And then, of course, Mom looks out the window and she's like, Oh, my God, what's going on? So she calls the amb amb 911. And then the ambulance attendants get there, and they get attacked by bees. And uh, that was a lot of, a lot of people getting attacked by bees. I it was a really beautiful episode I, I just loved it frankie mcdonald you ever been stung by bees back in, i got stung by a wasp in 1996 i was only 12 years old back then did it hurt where did you sting you it hurt on my finger and back in at the blueberry hill close to my house in summer of 1996 i was only 12 years old back then did Sorry. you like cry frankie or I was crying and screaming and things like that back in the day. That's before I went to middle school. That's before I started junior high school in September 1997. Yeah, well, man. That's before I started my last year in elementary school. That was the year I graduated high school. Yeah. What was I going to say about bees now? Oh, man. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, this one time we were playing at this festival, Robson Valley Music Festival, and we got to stay at this cabin on a beautiful little lake all to ourselves, cabin. And then, uh, so coming and going all weekend. And then finally, the one Sunday morning, I walk out the door and this hornet comes and stings me in the ear, right on the top. And uh, I was mad. And I'm, because I'm a, a mountain man, you know, farm kid animal, my immediate reaction is like, I'm going to find you guys and I'm going to kill you all. And I didn't care how bad it was going to hurt. It's like, I'm going to do this. Like, so then I went and found uh, some flammable stuff. Like, I think it was like a can of Raid and a lighter. And I was like, I was going to go and like Raid and Flame Raid the nest. I was like, and so I got everything I need now. I Did like, it work? This is going to be awesome. So now I got to find the nest. And then finally I walked around the corners. I'm looking this way and that in the farm property. And then uh, I see the hornet's nest, eh? And it was about uh, like a foot and a half wide. And I said, uh, you win this time, Hornets. <laughs> man. That was too big of a I would never be that confident. I would never be that confident, man. I would never. I would just, like, run away from the thing. I don't care how far. I would just run away, man. And I actually know that. Talking about bees, today I'm probably going to have one of those dreams where I, where, like, I see a bunch of them and I start running. Or it's, like, those a giant dreams. one and I just start running from the giant one. Yeah, I mean, right? Those are some pretty weird ones I have. I have some pretty weird dreams, man. I don't know. Like <laughs> I dream about tornadoes a lot of my life. A lot of my significant dreams had tornadoes you know what, involved. I, I have, I have, I think, a few times dreamt about them, woke up and I said, oh, man, it's not even really, like, happening, man. I thought it was really happening, man. I actually thought that. I was seeing the first one, and then I woke up, and I was like, oh, damn it. It's just a goddamn dream, man. I wish it was real, man. You know what I mean? I was like, man, like, look at the big tornado. I'm like, oh, damn. Everything Frankie, dreams. what's the scariest dream you ever had? <laughs> Scary, saying like wolves chasing after a guy. Wolf chasing after you in your dreams? You, yeah. should, you should make that as one of your videos, Frankie. Wolf chasing after a guy. Yeah, has the guy ever been chased by wolves? Yeah. Two dogs chased me down Victoria Road in Whitney Pier in October 2008. That means dogs finally got away. And and I got news for you. I opened up my new YouTube channel on June 14, 2011. His name is Dogs and Wolves. 
That's right. Oh, that's how you got the name. Okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense now. <laughs> wow. I saw a wolf this winter. Today, uh, I stumbled across a golden eagle, which I've come across twice in this forest block. But uh, he was in the tree, so I spooked him the first time he took off. Then I came across him a second time, spooked him, he took off before I get a camera. Um, then I walked by uh, five different uh, spruce, grouse, and things like that. Each one of them took off at my feet. Boom! It was like, and gone. Like, oh, I missed that. Didn't get video of that. But that's okay, because a uh, moose must have come just by me, because the tracks were just fresh. But I didn't get any video of that either, so that was okay. Um, the, oh, there was fresh lynx tracks with little kitten paw prints as well which I never saw the link, so I didn't get any video of that uh, either. Then on the drive home, though, we saw a ptarmigan on the road, an actual one of those white ptarmigans, which uh, they're really fast, actually. I didn't get any video of that either. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can see me missing all the animals. That was some good wilderness footage I got today. Just a lot of, oh, I just missed it. Oh, I, he was just here. Oh, uh, not very good. So that's where you can find the radio version of this, or the that's where you can find the video version of this radio show. Of course, you can hear us on C for eighty eight point seven FM, talking comedy and meteorology. <laughs> you can hear us on CKUW ninety five point nine FM in Winnipeg, or you can go to Joey Only the Caribou Weather Dude YouTube channel. Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude, and uh, hit subscribe and see the video version of this show where uh, we got you know the wonderful faces of uh, well Gabriel's wearing a black suit and. Uh, a purple tie. Yup, man. I, mean, I look like I'm going to a funeral right now, so it's not that nice, but... <laughs> but, you know, still... I gotta have some color to it. Radio viewers yeah, would, would be surprised to find out how suave you're looking right now. Radio viewers would not be aware that Frankie's right now picking his teeth. But, you know, I wonder you can if hear us Frankie talk about it. Suit. But if you're on the video version of the show, you can see that for yourself. Brandon Hulk right now, he's wearing this lime green shirt, and he's got... Uh, as always, a supercell thunderstorm behind him, and yes, did Frankie leave? July. <laughs> I think Frankie left by accident. Of July, what? Uh, June. What date was the supercell behind me? I wrote it down in my book here of weather, cool weather oh, stuff. Oh, I'm the uh, book of weather, Brandon's book, book of weather, the BBB, book. the Brandon book of weather, or the BBOFOB. <laughs> This was June 12th, 20. The supercell here. And it produced ping pong ball sized hail. It was a nice little supercell, as you see here behind me. Looking absolutely yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could uh, really see the lowering of kind of the uh, cloud deck, kind of. Was that like inside it? Or like, uh, was that on like the side of it or like the center of it or like kind of where exactly yeah, yeah, in the center of the of the supercell here oh yeah, yeah, yeah so you could actually see the lowering part of it and you could actually see oh. where if there actually was a funnel you could actually yeah. see exactly where it would yeah. form right under that right right under that or right where the uh, chair is right where the chair is yeah that's where there's like a, a lowering of the storm. It's got kind of it's one of those chair needles, one of those chairs that spins. I've actually seen that lowering that? though. I've actually seen that. There goes, yeah, see that? Can you raise me up again, babe. Mm -hmm. You raise us up. The uh, yeah, well, the um, chair nado. Chair nado, yeah. Dominating the storm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am, and yeah, I've actually seen lowering on a storm before, and it's actually quite cool to look at i've only seen it in the distance though i haven't seen it like up you know close but i mean i've seen it in the uh distance and then you and then i uh got a text from mark robinson i think back in the summer telling me that i think that there was some lowering close to her house and he actually saw that video so i mean it was pretty kind of cool that if that was a little bit closer to my house Maybe I would have, uh, you know, gotten some better footage. And I actually think that that same exact cell produced a tornado, I think, on its track, I think, into 
eastern parts of the province, I think, or somewhere, somewhere close to that, I think. I think as it was moving east, I think, it actually did produce one, which was actually kind of nuts to hear about, right? I was like, this this, this close to seeing one. Of pretty nuts, close. Pretty cool. I've seen some tornadoes. They are cool. Speaking of nuts, <laughs> what's the gas prices right now? You got now? stung by a bee in your nuts. But, uh, I did. <laughs> True. Uh, what's what's the here, gas prices uh, in Ontario right now? I think I heard like close to like. Guess what? Uh, the modem uh, is back dollars? online. I had, just had to reboot the modem and things like that. Ah, I see. Oh, that thing. Because uh, it was, I had to reset the modem, but the modem's back online. The internet's back online. I had to unplug it and replug it, so it's back online. My Twitter's at Frankie McD. My Facebook is Frankie McDonald. My Instagram is Frankie McD ninety eight four. My TikTok is Frankie Down ninety eight four. My clap is Frankie Down ninety eight four. My Twitch is Frankie Down ninety eight four. My LinkedIn is Frankie McDonald. My Snapchat is Frankie M A C D O N. And my YouTube channel is Dogs and Wolves. What's the price of gas in Nova Scotia, Frankie? It's and it's supposed to go down a little bit. You're up over two bucks. Here it's. Um, I think $2. that here it's close to two dollars. I think it's pretty close to two dollars here. I think. As what a about? I don't think what I heard. What about Bonaventure, Quebec? Uh, we got about a buck ninety here, give or take. What about Brooks, Alberta? But, uh, uh, buck fifty, a buck seventy. So crazy. So um, I don't know if you guys are uh, anti-vacationist or pro-vax, but uh, I just think if everyone if everyone just doesn't drive for two weeks, we can flatten the curve. <laughs> okay. Well, look, uh, here in you in the province, actually, were actually That's why they're discovering, I the found out they're discovering virus in COVID-19 like virus in the sewers. So scientists discovered a coronavirus and COVID-19 type virus in the sewers of Portugal, Spain in March 2019. They're finding samples of virus like COVID-19 in the sewers somewhere on the other side of the world like Spain and Portugal before it was first discovered in Wuhan, China in January 2020. So hey, he was I'm the Emma first man. guy to go down in that sewer Pennywise. and get uh, the COVID. Pennywise was. Who was Pennywise that guy? was, and that's how they found that. They found Pennywise. It was Pennywise. <laughs> it was Pennywise. <laughs> yeah. Pennywise. So, um, you got the Gabriel, COVID. <laughs> how do we find? Uh, how does, how does um, the audience, listening audience, find Gabriel online? Oh, it's just at Gabriel Barardo. Twitter, Twitter. at GB. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Twitter's at. GB, the weatherman. Instagram is at Gabriel Barodo. TikTok is at horrifying horror. I'm almost at 60,000 <laughs> on that, actually. 59.9 thousand. I'm like, close to there. Close That's to there. Good. I'm just one more video away from that, possibly. And, I mean, yes, I'll be watching another horror movie later on. Hopefully it's... Good enough to we are reach that 60,000, but I mean, hey. We're out of yes. time. How do they find you online, Brandon? Oh, you can find me at Brandon Hauk on Facebook. Um, Hocus Pocus on the Twitter. The dog football on the in the, the dog football <laughs> And uh, if, any you, if any of you listeners out there, particularly people from University of Winnipeg meteorological courses, meteorology students, if you want to come on the show with us, please, you can find me, Joey Only, on Facebook. You can, of course, come to uh, leave a comment on Caribou Dude, Joey Only Caribou Dude, weather, uh, the, Joey Only the Caribou Weather Dude channel. Um, send me an email, joeyonlyoutlawband at gmail.com, and let us know. Come on the show. We'd love to hear more people. We need, we need more representation from Manitoba. That's a big thing because the radio show is half-based in Manitoba. When Joe Stover's on here, we got no one. Okay, that's the show for this week. Thanks for coming on. Stay safe. If uh, nuclear war comes, get under your desk. Duck and cover. Bye for now. Hi, Christy. I'm Frankie McDonald. I'm doing great so far. I'm Frankie McDonald. You're listening to Comedian Meteorological Report with Joey Only. Terrible weather, dude. Chinese pizza. It's Italian, not Chinese. It's Italian.